Stephen Carruth's 2013 experimental drama, Upstream Color, is an intense experience, visually and auditorily. The film maintains a sense of relentless forward motion while presenting us information in a disorientating way, so we feel almost powerless to catch up. In addition to the refreshing lack of plot-related dialogue, Caruth achieves this effect, I think, by deliberately subverting our own knowledge and expectations of the film language. An easy example would be the close-up, traditionally used sparingly to draw attention to an important bit of detail that one might have otherwise missed. In this film, it's used liberally, so much so that entire scenes are comprised of a quick succession of close-ups. Since we're used to the language of film, we know to pay closer attention to these close-ups. The problem, of course, is that not every shot contains important information. Some of them are just distractions. For example, in the opening setup, it's crucial for us to understand that the blue pigment on the plant is correlated with the presence of the worm creature, but this can be easily missed among all the other compelling close-ups. I think the technique successfully evokes emotions in the viewer that ties to the film's themes, namely disorientation, which is of course what the protagonist also feels throughout the film. What little dialogue there is during the initial setup is spoken out of context, confusing the viewer. You can see what? Who's? That's on Monday. So that when the inciting incident rolls around, the thief implants the worm into the victim. We hang on to his every word, just as Chris does. The next drink must be earned, and I'm going to tell you how. Focus closely on my instructions. His instructions are arbitrary, but at least he gives instructions, and from them, some semblance of a discernible plot emerges. Ironically, it's when Chris's mind is completely taken over that outwardly, she seems to have a goal. Of course, this quickly ends when the thief abandons her, and she's left to pick up the pieces, just as the audience is left to figure out what the rest of the film means. Act 2 begins around when the worm is drawn to the sampler dude. He takes the worm out and implants it into a pig, and now the pig and Chris are eternally connected somehow. She seems to forget everything and has to figure it out from there. Her objective, unbeknownst to her and the audience, seems to be to reunite with her soul pig, and she does this by working together with another victim to retrieve their collectively lost memories and return to the farm. Caruth has said, What I wanted to do was have a story where I break some people apart and make them have to figure it out all over again what it is that they are, how they see themselves, and how they behave. At some point, having both gone through this traumatic experience, Chris and Jeff start to become confused as to which memories are actually theirs. No. I told you that story. No, 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 you didn't. No. Yeah, he held me under. You remember, he held me underwater. So I'm not. And yet, with so you, I'm not allowed, you have to be I'm not allowed like to talk this. about my childhood. Talk about because you, just don't talk about my you think childhood. it's your childhood? childhood? The breakage in their psyche is formally represented through the breakage in the editing. That is, the duration of each shot is very short, creating a feeling of fragmentation. Even continuous actions are broken down into several shots through the use of jump cuts or a repetition. They could be starlings. 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 Combined with the liberal use of close-ups, this creates a sense of disorientation for the audience, which mirrors the character's own loss of defined purpose and identity. Perhaps the cinematography style of upstream color mimics our own experience of reality in that we're constantly assaulted by all sorts of audio and visual information without the magic frame of a camera to dictate to us what to focus on and for how long. And even though we didn't grasp everything amidst the chaos, time goes on, the cycle pushes us relentlessly forward, and it's in this environment that the characters must search for meaning. Caruth also says, I wanted to explore the concept of trying to recognize that you're in a narrative, one that you may have made up for yourself, or one that was impressed on you from an outside force. There's certainly a tension between free will and the potential influence of a higher power, and you can replace that with God, society, fate, or some sort of timeless organism. This connection is emphasized at the midpoint of the film when Chris finds out that she can't have children. We suspect that this might have something to do with a sampler, but we're not sure. 
Meanwhile, the characters don't even know that the sampler exists. Much like how the pigs probably aren't aware of the influence the sampler has over their lives. Although the worms are the object cause of the cycle, we wonder if the trauma they cause is synonymous with other traumas in the characters' lives, namely Chris's cancer diagnosis and Jeff's career crisis. Are these events really within our control, or are we swept up in the unknown, unpredictable forces? Usually, when we watch a film, we're understanding that we're understanding the plot, but in upstream color, the plot acts upon us, assaulting us with myriad colors and sounds so that we emotionally react before our minds have time to piece together the fragmented cuts. We're asked to remember and reformulate the past so that it makes sense to us, and this is exactly what the characters have to do. Karuth says, I needed this mythical cycle to be happening around them. They're not aware of it because if they are, then that changes everything. Indeed, when they do become aware, the cycle is broken. Thanks for watching.